Hey. Hey, hey, everybody. Hey. Welcome everyone to the show. Hey, we got a couple of special guests with us on tonight. Hey, uh, if you uh, watched our show last week, uh, you know we played a band called Hail Sagan. Uh, we have uh, Sagan Amory with us today over the phone. Say hi, Sagan. Hi. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? <laughs> so she's going to be guest hosting with us today, and uh, one of her other uh, one of her other bandmates, uh, Nick Quijano. I hope I pronounced that right. I, I said it once earlier. Who knows if I did it right? <laughs> uh, he is joining us in the chat. Got it. So say hi to him in the chat. That's Nick there. What's up, Nick? Hi, Sayana. I think he just stepped out, but he's here. Oh, here he is. Okay. And it seems like our add-on for our chat's working. Sai so says it is. Yep. All right. So uh, this week, uh, our band of the week was a band called Wasteland Rocks. Hopefully you like that. That was uh, another female-fronted metal band. I swear to God, they're not all going to be female-fronted metal bands. <laughs> Just worked out that way. Uh, but, yeah, they're uh, more of a traditional metal band. They're out of Norway because, of course, they are. <laughs> and uh, they do a pretty good set of classic metal covers <laughs> and uh, a couple of originals that are in that style as well. Uh, check them out on their YouTube channel. Check them out on Twitter. It's at Wasteland Rocks. Their uh, YouTube URL uh, we will post in uh, the video description on YouTube. We'll post it in the podcast. And uh, you can go check them out at Wasteland.rocks. All right. That being said, uh, today we have our beer of the week. Okay. Screw the sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> you are so horrible. <laughs> You know, I, I did uh, I did a lot of pro show prep today. I even I have interview questions for Sagan and Nick. I, I appreciate you, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody better, God damn it! All five inches of you. All right, here's the beer of the week. <laughs> there we go. Sounds a lot better with the sun. <laughs> uh, we have from Stout's Brewing Company, Scarlet Lady Ale. Yeah, I don't know if you people can see it, but it has a nice little pretty cartoon there of some lady drinking some beer. She looks promiscuous. I don't know what she's doing later. She's but. drinking it out of a horn, too, Viking style. So. Oh, yeah, she is. And I think she's naked, so that's always good. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go We'd love ahead. to pass you one through the phone there. but <laughs> Cheers. Not bad. It's a red ale. Yeah, it's a red ale. It's definitely a red ale. Uh, it's very, very, very good. I really like it. Actually, that is really delicious. I love red ales, so I'd say that's probably one of my favorite ones that we've uh, drank Drank, drank, drank. I dropped out of high school, drink, so drink, I don't know how to talk. Um, <laughs> drink, drank, punk. <laughs> so, um, yeah, very delicious. Uh, I This is the second time we tried. What was the other beer we tried for them? I don't remember. I don't remember. You got to get a fucking spreadsheet of these. Yeah, I know. We, we lost track of what beer. We need to write it down somewhere. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> if, if uh, this is probably one of my favorite beers we have. If I would rate this, I would give it four and a half out of five Dodge challengers oh jesus <laughs> Are you great, car. great car great <laughs> oh. uh, god sorry, i've been waiting all day for that sorry uh. <laughs> the show must go on though all right <laughs> enough out of you hey uh yet again those those <clears throat> you are just joining us uh from uh, the band hail sagan we have sagan amory on the phone with us today how's it going hi how are you we are doing it wonderfully, except for Casey's just trying to ruin the chat for everyone. <laughs> Fucking world's going to hell in a hand. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have, a really dark, <laughs> I have a really dark sense of humor. I can't help it. <laughs> Did this person swallow the microphone? Is it too loud? We can back it down a little bit. Yeah, we have that. We have actually the phone set up decently to where we can control the sound now. Before, we were just like half-assing it, but we can control it now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is that better, everybody? Nah, just tell him to deal with it. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> yeah, shall I, should we do like a, a check one, check two kind of thing here? Check, check one, yeah, two, you're, three. You're probably used to that, so this is probably just right at home. Oh, my God. I was just going to say I can't get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are not touring right now, correct? Um, we are home right now. We're leaving again in September. Um, I know that some of the dates have been leaking over on Facebook, so I won't say anything. If you want to be a private detective and go check it out. A couple of the dates have been leaked out, so I'm going to say. But, yes, we'll be back out in a few weeks. Yeah, your your last tour, you went out with uh, Mushroom Head, wasn't it? Yes, we did. How was that? Yeah, you said that like it was. It was freaking awesome. Yeah? <laughs> See, uh, I know when we... Oh, like, before... Well, 
Well, before we left, I was getting all these like private inbox messages and emails from all these bands that have toured with them, and we're like, oh, you're going to fucking hate it. They're going to treat you like shit. You're not going to have any room on stage. You're going to have to play on the floor, all this crap. And I was like, okay, I don't really need this in my life right now, but I'll see what happens. So I got out there expecting, you know, the biggest dickheads in the world. But it turned out that they were like the coolest human beings ever. I was curious. They were like the toy, the toy, the uh-oh. Yeah, like, there's, they have two stand-up drum, drums in the front, but Nick and I, they have to stand behind those drums anyway to play, so it's not really taking up any space in the sense of, it's in their way as well, so if they can do it, like, why can't we play with them as well? Like, it doesn't make any sense that anyone would be mad about the stand-up drums, and, um, but they were really cool people. We ended up becoming very friendly with them and their crew, and, um, I just thought they were very sweet and accommodating, so I don't know what these other people, what their issues were, but they liked me. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, that's great. I mean, uh, when, Waylon, <laughs> when Waylon left the band, he had some not kind things to say about them, so I was curious. I know, I saw that. I don't really know what that's about. I feel like in my situation, I can understand Mushroom Head's side of it, because whenever someone leaves my band, they also have such, some not nice things to say. The difference is I have them under contract, so they legally can't go out and say anything in public. <laughs> But they'll send me a really nasty scathing email, and it's always, like, the most ridiculous crap. Like, yo, yeah, you gave me all this stuff, and you took care of me and everything, but it wasn't good enough. You know, so it's like, I think whenever a band splits up like that, the person that, like, ends up not in the band anymore is usually just, like, sad groups, you know? So I, I didn't find that they were um, horrible people at all. In fact, I found that they were really cool people. And so much as that, like, their tour manager, who's also, like, in the band, would always come up to me before the show and ask if I wanted to share any space that they had found, because it's hard on the road to find privacy. Oh, I'd imagine. And so he would always come up to me and say, yeah, so he'd come up to me and say, you know, it's not much, the green room smells like piss, and it's really hot, but if you want, you can have half of it. You know, he was always, like, offering to, like, you know, find a place for me to go so I could, you know, um, get dressed in privacy, except for there was one show where there was no room for anyone. And I ended up getting changed in the field. Oh, um, nice. <laughs> and that was, <laughs> was there at least corn? Block? I got my, no, it was like a dirty field, and there was glass, like broken. It was like people were throwing like bottles in the field, and the like. So there was like broken glass on the ground, and so I was like, and it was dark. So it was after the show, so I could hardly see. You know, the guys were like putting all the gear in, and I'm just like trying to get this outfit off, and. The outfits I wear, if you see it, it's like, you know, they're really tight. So it's like this corset. And I'm trying, like, trying to get this thing off without doing, like, you know, what, what was that? What were those, those um, wardrobe malfunctions? I'm trying <laughs> to have a wardrobe <laughs> malfunction. We, we, we don't <laughs> want even to though it's Jackson. dark, we've got, like, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's dark out there, but there's, like, obviously other vehicles around. It's like a parking lot field. There's Wait other vehicles with lights on that. A corset. Corset. Yeah, I was taking it off. Corset. I was taking corset. Oh, sorry, I have a weird accent. No, yeah, I, I don't. I have you a don't. He's just an idiot. I, I just, I'm just an idiot. I, I, actually, I think I said corset <laughs> no, I did. like the I, car. <laughs> I'm from the East Coast. No, but I'm from the East Coast, and I've been in California for three years. So my accent is like not sure like which direction is coming or going. Oh, so okay. trust me, it's me. What, what from, but yeah, so huh? Where from the East well, Coast? Well, anyway, are okay. From? So I was born in New Jersey, raised there. I spent most of my time in New York City, so I was like, I came out here with a pretty thick accent. Oh, I've yeah, just been losing it over the last few years. Yeah. Yeah, right now, even my mom is going, why are you speaking like that? And I'm like, I don't <laughs> know. What are those words you're saying? I'm like, I don't know. Kale, quinoa, avocado, coconut water. I don't know what else you to say. You can keep your fucking oh, avocado. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, you know. So I'm sitting, I'm in this field, and there's glass all around me, and there's, like, you know, lights coming from other vehicles, and so finally I'm like, fuck it, I can't, I'm not going to try to do this, like, eloquently, this thing's coming off, and maybe the boobs are coming out, I don't know. <laughs> My shirt comes off, well, the corset comes off, <laughs> I'm standing there in this field, and I look over, and I'm not going to say who it was, or where they were from, or anything like that, because I want to call them out. I saw a bunch of dudes staring at me from another vehicle. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, what do I do? So I just waved, and I'm like, hi, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I'm standing here naked in a field, glass all around my ankles, so glamorous, right? So. Yeah, so what you're telling <laughs> us is being in a band is not what it all is meant up to be. 
Oh, my God, no. I mean, there's moments, like, when we headlined the Hard Rock, that was, like, legit, super, like, rock star status. Like, holy shit. Did you have They gave us, like, an apartment. They gave us an apartment in the green room. (laughs) It was, like, it had, like, a shower. It had, like, nice tile. There was, like, a fucking chef that came and brought all these, like, these people, like, these servants brought all this weird food. And was, like, this is (laughs) Yeah, they were, like, if you want, like, more, let the chef know we can do something, like, you know, special. Here's a menu for anything that's not on your rider. I'm like, oh my god! And I'm like, of course, like freaking out. So I'm like, face, uh, not FaceTiming. I'm like uh, live streaming it on Facebook so everyone can see. You know, because I have a pretty close relationship with my fans. So I'm like, if I get to be a part of this, you guys do too. Let's check this out. But it was pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I, that was probably like the nicest I've ever been treated. I would have been like, this is um, way too definitely... nice for me. Where's a field? <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I'm used to. Like, <laughs> so, so... I have like, by that, <laughs> I was traumatized by that point. I don't know how much I could appreciate it. I'm like, I don't know what's happening right now. Why am I not in a field with glass around me? <laughs> so my question is, yeah. did, they, did they give you full-size cheese and, and small pieces of bread? Oh, I see what you did there. I actually answered a interview question with that um, oh, a while you? back, and nobody got that. Nobody got the reference. Oh, really? Um, no, they, tap, they, you dumbass. Yeah, they only gave me <laughs> <laughs> they only gave me the small cheese. I didn't get the small pieces of bread, though. It would have been nice um, if someone would have sat there and cut those little pieces to fit. <laughs> so, so no, um, you had large bread. No, they didn't give me any bread. They gave me Bullshit. some weird ass cheese that I wouldn't. Eat. They gave me cheese that I wouldn't eat because I did not know what it was. And I, I'm like, I'm like one of those people. Like I can become a billionaire and I will still eat like normal food because I can't deal with like weirdo, like foofy, like weird finger food. Like I freak out. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Cheese should just be cheese. And this was like weird. There was some strange stuff in it. Nick thought that maybe one part of the cheese had anchovy in it, which I freaked oh, out about. So I was like, that's fuck? not, I'm not eating that. Why would you yeah, I know, right? Like, cheese, who the hell would man? you ever eat that? Ugh. Exactly. Like, why would you ruin cheese with, like, a salty fish? I don't know, but I was like, I'm definitely not eating that. What's but the... there was some cool stuff, too. Like, there was, I'll, I'll call it mozzarella for everybody, but where I come from, it's mozzarella. <laughs> but anyway, they <laughs> had, um... <laughs> You can imagine when I first got to California, right? And like, I'm like, oh, I'll have the mozzarella sticks. And they're like, what? I'm like, the mozzarella sticks. They're like, we have no idea what you're talking about. So, Where was this at that they didn't know what yeah. mozzarella sticks were? No, I guess it's the way I pronounced it. They just didn't know what I was uh, saying. Maybe they were passively, aggressively trolling me. I don't know. Let me I, guess. You, but, you pronounce um, it bruschetta instead of bruschetta? Bruschetta. Um, uh-huh. uh, what else do we have? I'm trying to think of what else they say. Some weird food stuff, like oh, man, it got. How do you pr- how do you pronounce provolone? It's everything. It's like a whole other world. How do you pronounce oh, provolone? provolone? Oh, just provolone. It, it's pronounced provolone. provolone. Yeah, know, just provolone. I used to work at a deli, it's and people provolone. used to call it provolone. <laughs> provolone. Yeah, they'd be like, that's so weird. I know. I'd, no, like, those people, those people are wrong. It's just there's no there's no hard e at the end of anything that has an e in an in an Italian American word. Did they I, did they uh, get, eat it with their bologna too? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I just I hated working at deli. Bologna, really horrible so, people. <laughs> so the word out on the I've streets. only I, I oh, oh go ahead what I was just gonna say so the, no I'm just we're babbling. <laughs> everyone's everyone's gonna everyone's in a standoff right now. No one knows what to do. <laughs> yeah, there's a delay and it makes it sort of hard. <laughs> Yeah, well, we were just going to ask you. So the word out on the streets is basically Hale Sagan's a super group. Is that right? Um, at moments, yes, and other moments, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, Nick comes from uh, Power Man 5000. I know you've been in a couple of bands yourself. Who's playing bass and drums for you currently? Yeah. The bass is being played by a robot, which is pretty awesome. I don't know if that's been done before. Actually, it has. Um, there was another band that was out on the road with us who was doing the same thing. So we don't have a human bass player. Yeah, no human bass player. Um, ideally, I'd like to have robots in the entirety of the band, but right now I'm being forced to use humans. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, our bass player is a robot. Um, we have on drums and guitar over the, the span of the year that we've been out, and um, all, everybody's played in one or more bands that are notable. We don't always um, 
publicly announce it because sometimes there's an issue where they're not allowed to say it because the other band gets upset or gotcha. some weird drama crap like that. Because yeah, musicians are are fickle humans and and worse than tattoo artists. <laughs> yeah, hence the masks. Very, yeah, the masks are amazing. So they go under the mask, and so when we're allowed to talk about what band they were in, um, we will, uh, you know, throw it on the flyer or let people know. And if not, we just know in private or, you know, talking to the fans up close, we'll, we'll drop it up, you know, on them and say, oh, did you know that so-and-so was in this band? And they go, oh, no shit, you know, so. So is that the real reason why you have your band members wear masks is because they don't want to be known? It's partly because... We wanted to make it really anonymous in the sense that we wanted to be able to switch out different guys under there so that you never knew who it was. And hopefully some of the dudes that are a little bigger and have more say in what their career is doing, they can come out, maybe pull the mask off at the end and go, oh, it was me this whole time, you know. Um, that's what my ideal situation would be for the band. So you're doing um, the ghost thing. And then, you know, it's funny. I didn't know anything about Ghost until recently, and I actually heard one of their songs for the first time, and it was amazing. <laughs> Um, no, I don't know what they're doing. I know that they're out of Sweden and he basically put a bunch of people under a mask, but they were unknown from what I've seen recently because they're all suing each other. Are we ta we're taking this as a so, band called Ghost? Um, we're doing it a little... What's up? I, I didn't know there was a band called Ghost, yeah. I guess, Jay. I thought we were talking yeah, about... a band like, called Ghost. God, I thought, you need to get with it. I know. I thought, yeah, we, I thought we were talking I about Ghost by the Whip. Them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I saw, I saw photos of them. I saw photos of them, but I never knew anything about their music because I just never got a chance to get into it. And I knew in Louisiana, and they were playing music over the, the speakers, you know, waiting for the bands to set up, and I heard a song, and I go, wow, this is a great song, and... So I was like, hey, Siri, what is this? And they said, ghosted. I'm like, no shit. Yeah. Didn't sound as much as I thought it would, like, in terms of the way they looked, but I liked it. It was pretty you cool. Said your bass player was a robot. Is it Siri? <laughs> yeah. No, it's a. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, our bass player lives in the box that we call the robot. And our robot um, basically does our light show for us and plays our bass, and um, I even have a backup harmonizer on there, so they harmonize with me when I'm singing, so I don't have to have a backup singer. And You know, as you know being in a band is difficult, so God damn, having robots makes really, things a little easier. <laughs> music has really come a long way since I've done it. Holy shit. As a, human, <laughs> as a human former bass player, I'm kind of offended. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I, yeah, I, I've been I know. replaced. I'm outsourced. Well, bass players. Yeah. I know. The there's, there's, like two or, there's like two of you at every show that comes up to me and tells me how you don't understand it, even though it sounds really good, and that the bass player never messes up. And I'm like, that's because the bass player is a robot. <laughs> but I understand, like, and I'm totally against, like, you know, replacing humans in, like, the workforce. But since bands don't really make any money, I'm not really replacing anyone that would be making any real money. So nobody needs to be upset about it. Yeah, I would, make, um, I would make the robot yeah, like, change in the in the field. <laughs> yeah, you'll make more. Believe me, you'll make more money in the deli. <laughs> but but seriously, it's just you know, it's it actually it does it is a, it does come down to a lot of times financial things. Bass players are you know they have a lot of gear. It's heavy. It's expensive. It's just not a mouth to feed. It's at this juncture in time where we're at. It's just like we can't add an extra guy. Um, it's definitely something I would think of in the future when the band's able to, you know, when the band's a little bigger and we're able to bring an extra person on, we have a bigger touring vehicle, things like that. Um, then I'll be doing the auditions for the bass player, but for right now, we just have the robot. Uh, I didn't notice, but so since you don't have a bass player right now, say you would shoot a music video, would you make a joke and like make a robot there, like a little like crappy one, like with uh, like a box with like tin foil on it, <laughs> or would you just like not put them in? <laughs> no, we don't. We don't put the bass player in. Like if you look at the videos we released, there's just no bass player, neither live nor in our actual videos. Um, it's just you know something a little different. Though, like I said, I don't think it's that different because there was a band that was on the tour package with Mushroomhead that was doing the same thing. So I think it's it's. Unfortunate for bass players, it's becoming a normal thing in the sense of it's more economically viable to put a band on the road without an extra person, mm -hmm. and you don't need the bass if you can put it, if you can program a robot to do it. So, well, look at the Doors; they didn't have one. That was like what in the seventies. Yeah, I mean that band was amazing, and there are there are other you could like you could totally Google that shit too. There's metal bands that like 
the top 10 metal bands that didn't have a drummer, top 10, you know, rock bands that didn't have a bass player. Like, it's been done before. It's not, this isn't anything new. It's just the way that we're doing it is more technologically advanced, you know, in terms of, like, you know, talking about a band like The Doors. It yeah. probably was a little harder for them um, in the sense of pulling it off, but with the technology available to us right now, it, it makes it easy, so... Yeah, when I was younger, that was that's what always was in short to, like supply was bass players. We could never ever find them. So the like the last band we were just yeah. like, fuck it, I'm sick of looking. So we just didn't have one. Like we never put it in the. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, fuck it. That's a big part of it too. Is it? Yeah, it's really hard, especially finding musicians in Los Angeles is next to impossible, which you think is crazy because you think, well, everybody comes to Hollywood to you know be a star or something, but that's not true. It's just a lot of people come to Hollywood. And then they get really high and they walk around in circles and I don't know what they're doing, but they're not playing, you <laughs> know. Court <laughs> well, you know, well, yeah, well, you know that weed is legal here, though. So it's like kind of like, you know, everyone kind of just walks around in a haze. So it's kind of tough to, and I have nothing against it. I mean, I think it's cool. Everyone should chill and relax, but at the same time, it's, it's a relaxed place. It's not a place for, like, being a go-getter in a sense. So if you come here, it's kind of like, chill, go to the beach, smoke some weed, nobody seems to have a job, everyone drinks lattes, I don't really know what anyone does here, but <laughs> it's very, very relaxed. No, because I've been to California once and you like <laughs> nailed it. water. Yeah, like you nailed it what I thought California yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. Like. Well, she lives there, she ought to have nailed Yeah. So it's like, so imagine like trying to find an employee or like a band member or something. It's like next to impossible. You're, and if you do find someone, they're just like not going to take it seriously because they just don't give a shit. So you're like, okay, never mind. So you get the robot. Yeah, so, fuck it. I picked the robot too. All right. So uh, you guys are signed to EMP, correct? No, we were last year. And it was a short stint on the label to release our first EP. And then we left the label after we released our EP. So now we're independent. Oh, so right. it was just like a way. To, yeah, it was just a way to distribute our first, um, our debut EP. I was, I was kind of curious how, uh, um, how David Ellison does does with the whole whole label thing. I know he. Would've... I don't know. He's really nice. Um, I met him in Scottsdale when we played in Scottsdale. I got to meet him and take a little photo with him. He's a really nice person. My dealings with him was that he was just really cool and he's super laid back and just kind of like a chill, normal dude. Like for as famous as he is, you would never. Yeah, think that he would be so like normal, but I'm finding that the more famous people I meet, the bigger and the more famous they are, the fucking nicer they are. They're so cool, and then it's like these little shitheads that think they're famous that have like bad attitudes. That's what I'm finding. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. Dave Ellison. David Ellison always seemed like a really nice guy. Dave Mustaine, on the other hand, seems like a prick. Yeah, a very talented <laughs> prick. Don't get me wrong, he's a prick. <laughs> but he's a prick. Well, I don't know. I mean, I know that. My old manager had talked to him about our band, so I didn't really get to hear what was said to him, but I know the other Dave, um, Dave Ellison, that I've talked to him, like, directly, and, and yes, I do have his phone number, but no, you guys can't have it. <laughs> but no, he was, he was really nice. He was a nice guy, and like I said, they put out, they put out our debut EP, and then we went indie, and um, I don't know where we're going to go from here. No one knows, you know? It's like kind of one of those weird things where you're just kind of doing your thing and see what happens. Well, nowadays with uh, streaming becoming as popular as it is, you almost don't need a label if you can put it out on yourself. You don't. Well, you don't need a label in the sense of you can absolutely do 100% of the things that the label does. Do it in a cheap way so that it doesn't cost you millions of dollars. You know where the label says, "Okay, here's a bill for like a million bucks because we did all this stuff," and you don't know it if you know how to make heads or tails of it. You can do it all yourself for like you know pennies on the dollar, but. There's a lot of stuff that you need in this industry in terms of support that typically requires a label. So no matter how much you get done, you could have a million followers. You could be bringing in a million dollars. And there's people who will slam a door in your face and not give you the opportunity because you're not signed. Jesus Christ. So sometimes it's just one of the things that, you ha yeah, it's really difficult. But basically be like, yeah, it's fine. I know you're bringing in millions of bucks. I know you've got a billion followers. You can probably sell out every show. But you're not on the label, so I can't talk to you. Like that happens all the fucking time. All the time. I'm shocked. So that, I really am. And, you know, yeah. So unless that changes, it won't really matter. Um, independent bands can can keep getting what they want, and there's going to be a lot of things that they won't be allowed to be a part of, um, especially like festivals and things like that. There's just a lot of things that they'll never be able to be a part of if they don't get on the label. So that's why I said, even though we're indie right now, it, that may not always be the case because we may have to at some point, you know. Yeah. So uh, you're not so. you're not getting an invite to download if you're not on a label, huh? I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure how all of the specific 
festivals work, but I know that the majority of that bigger stuff either requires a label or requires you to have a team of people that are able to somehow finagle you on there, but usually requires you to be on the label because they won't even talk to those people unless you're doing a little, it goes, it always goes back to the label at the end of the day. So um, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's really unlikely unless you have that support. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised. I thought really at this point in time you could do it all yourself, but. Yeah, I guess no, because uh, the labels the labels run like they own like I think like eighty percent of streaming and all that stuff is owned by labels anyway. So like it's really hard to compete with you know a billion dollar corporation regardless of how well you're doing. No, oh, that's true. I mean, the music industry in general has changed so much from where it used to be. Even the metal scene in general. Yeah, I mean, you changed. Can, you can't just. You can't just be a musician anymore. You got to find other ways to bring in money, and whether that means you have to go get a job, or um, you know, I know a bunch of guys who are out there working, you know, on Monday through Friday, and then they play shows on the weekend because they have to work. Or um, and they're in good bands too. It's not that their bands are, like are shitty or something. Their bands are pretty good. They just can't afford to stay on the road. Um, or you find like you know other ways to monetize things and whatnot, and um, it's getting a little harder. Um, what would you I say think is for affecting musicians. that? That that's making it like this. Is it just the price of things like gas um, and all that stuff that's going up? Or no, no. I would say that part of it is just greed on behalf of like the dinosaurs in the industry who are just. It's kind of like you know that whole idea of like you know grab as much as you can and don't share with others. It sometimes that happens in like all different. Things, not just music, but like in societies and yeah. stuff like that. It's the same thing. It's that top down, top down kind of effect where you know someone owns most of it at the top and then get crumbs at the bottom, you know. And so there's not enough to go around. Um, and well, so I would say greed screwing. is probably labels have been making a, a business. Yeah, labels and, forever. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what happens. You know, when you sign to any entity that. Isn't gonna. They're basically gonna say like, I want to own you, and like, I'm gonna take everything, and you're gonna get crumbs. And musicians are happy to follow the crumb trail because they're they have stars in their eyes. You know, they're they, like, we're like, we're 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 artists. We wear our hearts on our sleeve, and it's really easy to you know lead us. So like, I feel like that's why it's such a good business for the people on top on the top because they know that no matter what, you're never gonna say no because you just want that little tiny bit of an opportunity. You know, so. Well, um. I, I've been, it's I've kind of just the way it's always been. Oh, sorry, talking over each other again. <laughs> uh, I, I've talked to a few <laughs> few uh, people in in larger bands. You know, and you'd be surprised how many of them have day jobs. I mean, hell. Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know. Hell, even uh, even HR from the Bad Brains works in a grocery store. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's the deli. I mean, I'm lucky. Like, like, Ovalone. yeah. Nick and I are lucky. Like, we get to we have um, you know, we do work from home. Like, I work for a nonprofit um organization, and I do all my work from my computer, so I'm I can bring it on the road. That's really the ideal situation if you're a musician is to find a gig that you can bring out on the road with you and from home, so that you can make your own hours and then you know you can do things like i'm doing right now or go on the you know go play shows or you know something like say a label calls you and says you got to be here tomorrow at 9 a.m you don't know if i'm actually going to sign you or anything but be here and you know you can some people might have to quit their job to do that so that's why it's cool to have a gig oh you have to be up at 9 a.m <laughs> oh, like, mm. oh no way yeah, or, or you can take <laughs> I, don't, I don't yeah <laughs> i don't get up before noon so <laughs> You could take our approach and uh, make dick and fart jokes on the internet. <laughs> yeah, just that do works. that. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, there is always that, right? I can oh. fall back on something like that. So I, I, I have faith that it'll work out. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, I got to say, I, I was going to ask you this. Uh, speaking of making dick and fart jokes, how is it to be a woman on the road with a bunch of stinky, smelly guys? Oh my god, it's horrendous. <laughs> it's <laughs> like everything. Oh my god, it's like after like the first week, I'm like, I don't want to hear about your dick anymore. I don't care about that girl you fucked behind the dumpster. And I've heard some crazy fucking stories too. Like, I'm like, I don't know if you're making this up just to make people laugh in this car or if you're like being serious, but holy shit. Like, you know, there's moments where it's funny and there's moments where you're like, oh my god has to stop yeah it's just non-stop just i don't know so that's basically <laughs> i never and I, I mean like 
I have, you know, uh, there's boys in my family, I have brothers and stuff. Like, it's not like I've never heard that before, but just, like, incessantly, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for, like, four weeks. Uh-oh. That was that noise. <laughs> it's my computer being a shit piece uh, of shit. Oh. Are you still with it's us? Yeah, me too. Can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I have. I can hear you. Technical difficulties. <laughs> so, have since <laughs> like say you met another band and they have like a female singer, are you like, thank God, another female? <laughs> yes, I am actually. I get really excited, um, and then I don't want them to leave my side. And I'm like, please take me with you. No, like, I, yeah, I get really excited. Um, I love female musicians. I love connecting with female musicians. Unfortunately. Most females are taught to not connect with other females, so a lot of a lot of cattiness involved. But I'm just nice to everyone, so I get uh, excited. What do you mean by that? Like, are you talking about like a society thing or like a musical like thing that women don't talk to each other? I think it's both. I think it's a competition thing. I think this is weird, stupid. I don't understand it thing in music where everyone has to compete. Not just the girls; the guys do it too. Yeah. And the guys do it against girls and vice versa. Where like. Everyone's a competitor, and you got to go for their throat. I think it's the dumbest thing ever, and it's really, it's it's really helping to destroy the industry. But, um, but yeah, there's this thing like I don't know why. Like I've heard it from like the higher ups, like just separatism with females. Like oh, there'll be too many female fronted bands on that on that show, or oh, you can't be part of this thing because they already have a girl, and like it's like the weirdest thing. And I'm like, you do realize that this is the dumbest thing you've ever said because a you know, girls make money, so you're not making as much money as you could possibly make because you're separating females. And B, like, who gives a shit, you know? So, I don't know. I think it's really weird. Well, the camaraderie has changed in general with metal, it seems. Like, there's a lot less of it. Everybody seems to always be angry at each other. I don't, I don't know if there ever really... I don't know if there ever really was, though. It may have been a facade because from my experience... Like, I get a lot of fans, and I feel so bad, like, I have to break their heart, but I'm also, like, a shoot-from-the-hip kind of person, so I, I just kind of say it, but when they, like, write to me and go, oh, you, you and this band should play together, I'm like, that's never going to happen, and they're like, why? I'm like, because we're not on, they're on a different label, they have a different manager, you know what I mean? I'm saying, like, there's, like, a different set of people, and it's just never going to happen, like, they're never going to allow it, because for whatever reason, they're, like, competition and weird shit, and, like, I think people think that, like, all these bands, like, just, like, hang out with each other, and... Like, we all, like, you know, me and the other girls have pillow fights, and then we all go to barbecues, and, like, <laughs> it's not like that. It's, <laughs> you just hail everyone's heart. It's not like that in this industry. Pillow like, fights and barbecues. Yeah. That should be the next pillow name of your fight, album. Pillow fights, barbecues. That's your next album, Pillow Fights I know, and right? Barbecues. Oh, my God. <laughs> and so should be. But, that's the, but the truth is, is that, like, I don't, like, it's not like that at all. Like, it isn't, like, it isn't a friendly place. Like, everyone fights with each other. Everyone's secretly competitive. Um, you know, and it's, it's, there aren't any friends in this thing. And so, um, maybe back in the day there was, but I don't know if any of that was true. It may have been something orchestrated by a label to say, oh, we're going to pretend that this band's friends with this band. Maybe like, you know, wrestling, okay, they're friends now. No, wait, now they're having a falling out and the media gets a hold of it. And that's actually what I was going to say (laughs) when you were talking about this is it reminds (laughs) me of wrestling. Like. It seems yeah, like it's, it's exactly what it's like. This huge display of like you know, and I, I loved wrestling by the way. But <laughs> Degeneration X, <actually, laughs> they were, they were my bros. <laughs> but that's what it sounds like to me that you're explaining. Wait, I would totally, yeah, I would totally do that too. Like the wrestling shit. Like I would totally do that. Like if this if the industry paid that well, like I would totally stand up there with the microphone in the ring and be like, okay, this band was a real dick, you know? Like no, I but know. I mean, as as it is, it's like. I just roll my eyes and I go, I don't really care. Just show me where I have to play. You know, hand me my microphone. Let me rock. I, all I care about is rocking out with people. My my big thing out of this is like connecting mm-hmm. um, with people. I love I love the shows. I love when the fans come up and give me a hug and all that stuff. So that, that's what all I care about. So you know, you'll see. Sometimes I'll I'll like I'll help you know push some bands if I if they've been nice to me and they've actually gone another way to be like human to me. Then I'll like you know oh check this band out, but. Yes. Other than that, I just don't care. Yeah, I don't get that's involved what in it. I would do it for. Like me and Jay, we we started this podcast. We wanted to reach out and touch to people. Touch. Oh my god! You just wanted to. Reach I said out that wrong. I didn't mean to literally touch people. <laughs> Stop uh, lying. Yeah, you literally, literally went out to touch people. 
No, I know what bad touch is. And unite and on a united front of talking about dick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And vaginas and fucking and fart be, jokes and fucking behind dumpsters or whatever we were talking about or whatever you were talking about. Well, <laughs> because really, that's all. Yeah, because that's. Well, no, that's all anybody really cares about. I found like really all this other crap that's going on in the world. It's not. It's just nonsense. Like it's the fart jokes and the dick jokes and that stuff is what people really care about. So we should just continue to focus on that and. That's what I'm not saying. To mention, we're not... I mean, a lot of people, we're... a lot of people fuck behind dumpsters. I swear, I didn't know this was a thing until recently. Yeah, it happens like a lot. There's I'll a... be damned. It's a thing. <laughs> well, we uh, so, like, we are pretty enough that. to be in a band anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> oh man, that's well. Funny. I didn't get a chance to look at your photos, but remember, we always have bands like mine where we have masks. If you feel self-conscious, you can get under the mask. Apparently, you could bang some chick behind a dumpster. There's all kinds of like cool things that happen. Sounds great. Sounds great because after you're done, you're hungry. You can look at the dumpster for something to eat. <laughs> oh, that's my true God. because that's about all you're gonna get. That's all you're gonna get when you're changing your clothes in a field. <laughs> that is so that funny. And beer tickets. Like the corset thing is just so hilarious because oh, yeah. I don't know how someone puts that on or takes one off by themselves. It looks like you need need like oh, a my God. medieval machine to put one. I on. can't breathe. I can't even breathe in that thing, but after, like, the third week, you figure out how to get it on and off. It's like the first week, I'm like, help, help, help. After that, I just figure it out. And Are they expensive? Now I'm doing it with, like, one hand. <laughs> Are they expensive? What's that? Are corsets expensive? Mm, no, not if you know where to get them. I mean, there are websites that will, like, way overcharge you. Yeah. Because I think and, I should try um, to put one But you on can next find... <laughs> Oh my god! I I'm a bar. I'm a bargain shopper, so I can find you one really cheap. But right. yeah, try. You have to get the one with the. You have to find them with the metal boning inside because the plastic boning doesn't hurt you as much. You got to get the metal one so that it really oh, okay. like sucks your ribs in and pops your boobs up and it makes you feel like you can't move. Well, find me a really cheap one, and next week I'll try to put <laughs> one on. <laughs> yeah. You know, doesn't yeah. that negatively affect your ability to you know sing? <laughs> That's true. No, yeah, does it? I've I've. That that you know what as a a female musician I've found that because your boobs get in the way my boobs in particular get in the way of everything not everyone's boobs do but mine do mine do <laughs> um and I've learned how to just deal with I just I've learned how to just do it like you know like you just I don't know they say what do they say beauty is pain like anything cool is painful you know tattoos are painful anything you want to do that's fun is like you know bad for you or whatever you just learn how to like I I don't know I learn how to like kind of get around all that stuff so yeah in the beginning it was tough but i've gotten used to it and so it doesn't affect um, you at all it, no i don't i don't even oh. i don't even care anymore like in the beginning it was painful in the beginning i had a hard time breathing i remember i was having some heart palpitations oh my one of those God. shows i did Christ, i was like I still still yeah <laughs> oh, jesus it i had to get up on stage it was like oh i played i played who did i play with i played somebody big and i had to get up on stage and i was like well well i guess I'm just going to see if I drop that on stage. I guess that's where, I, where it's a good place to go. I don't know. I'm in front of all these people. It might be cool. See, I feel like if but I put one on, I would like happened poop and... myself. Like, see, you'd be able to, you'd be able to do I mean, you might. and never could. Yeah, like I just, I don't know. Like I just. Oh, like... and. What's that? Well, do you remember that movie, Fubar, Fubar 2? Yeah. Um, If you haven't, okay, because if you haven't seen those movies, you absolutely have to see those movies. Well, there's that one where he, at the end, he can hit those high notes. Yeah. Um, he wasn't wearing a corset. He had to have his balls cut off, but yeah. it's probably the same thing, so I don't know. No, no. No, and... it's not. <laughs> I, I'm sure Nick could, could vouch. It's I don't not know. at all what the same thing. No. Nick, Nick, is putting a corset on the same as getting your balls cut off? Wait, how did, how did this wait, conversation have you ever a corset get to on? <laughs> Wait, wait, I missed it. Why, why, did we, well, I why did we start talking about being well, open? We're, we're, we're being... <laughs> We're being openly hostile, right? So that's awesome. Um, that's our job. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's what we're supposed to do. Nick, have you? Is Nick answering? I can't. I can't see if he answered. But I'm. I'm just assuming they might get like tied up in. The, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how balls work. I have to deal with boobs all the time. I don't know how to deal with balls. So I'm assuming they might get stuck. You don't want balls. Or, balls oh, remember what things. was it? There's something. There's something about Mary when he gets the balls caught in the zipper. Yeah. Like, it's probably the same thing. Yeah, balls probably are something annoying. like that. Like I would rather have boobs. I think I've never had boobs, but they look a lot funner than balls. I just... <sighs> they're okay. I mean, they're they're definitely fun when you're in a pool because like 
when you just like lay back in the pool, the boobs kind of float up, and so you can kind of just kind of hang there with the. I don't know. It's kind of cool. That part's cool. They're not fun when you're trying to fit into clothing. Like they can really get in the way. Yeah, because they don't sound fun. At least boobs like look attractive. Like I feel like ball sacks look like the forehead you can of like Yoda. Stupid people to do dumb things for those. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. If I had boobs, oh, I know, I, I could know. ask people to like buy me drinks and shit. Like, well, yeah, you don't see like any, you don't see like any advertisement with like balls. It's always like boobs. Like, I know, there's like, never I any ball. I always said we ever. should have ball cleavage. Yeah, we should. Like we should have, we should have like a little cutout. I mean, pants that just cradle the nuts. <laughs> That's that that almost sounds like a good idea, but then I feel like like on paper it's a good idea, but then when it's actually applied, it probably won't go over so well. Oh no, I well, like if I ever because there's that. just something about balls that just yeah shaving would have to be mandatory though. Yeah. Definitely. Well, yeah, yeah, like, shaving I, and um, I don't even know, I don't even know what you would do with that. Like I can't just walk into a bar and like flop my balls on the bar and be like, "Hey, good looking. How about you buy me a drink?" Like it just doesn't work. <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. You're the guy. Who gets no, I mean, if you did that, I... yeah, that's a story. Oh. Yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a bonus to having boobs for sure, but um, um, I don't know. There's also there's a downside though, like being a female, especially in like rock music and metal. It's like really hard. Like a lot of musicians like they're like super like jealous. They'll write to me and be like, "Oh, you just got that." you're a girl and I'm like actually no I almost didn't get it because I was a girl you know like a lot of times like that I don't get to have because I'm a female or they don't think I can rock out as hard you know did you ever I'm like I always say well what I always say to people is I was I was born with a vagina but I have bigger balls than you and then they shut the fuck up so I'm like whatever (laughs) have you ever gotten (laughs) like just hearing you talk and sat like you sound like like a sweet person have you ever gotten like really fucking mad like something that oh, just who has it? pissed you off. No, I'm talking about like on on the road or you know, you oh, see Oh, well, you had to like put the see, motherfucker in his place. Yeah, That's you had good. to put your foot down like you were like yeah. if I see one more fucking um, d- fucking yeah. guy in a dumpster, I'm going to freak. <laughs> like did some set yeah, you off? Yeah, like, I would say that people underestimate me because um, you know, I'm very nice I'm nice to everybody. I'm nice to everybody, especially if they're nice to me. But the second someone crosses me, I'm like, it's like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's kind of like my head spins and then, yeah, like fumes come out. Oh, I'll definitely put someone in their place. Like, people will never walk all over me. I will never allow it. Mm -hmm. And Nick can attest to it. He's seen me. uh, I mean, I sometimes just, like, tell random people off if they do stupid shit, too. Like, I'll, I'll do it out in public in a parking lot. I don't care. Like, if someone, like, almost runs me over, I'll give them the finger and be like, you know, fuck off. Like, I don't really care. Like, Did someone else run you over? I'm friendly, an but... Example? <laughs> like, I, the other day, someone tried to run me over, and I was like, like, I, I cursed them off, and, you know, it was just like... Um, because people in California don't pay attention when they drive, so I they don't that. mind if they run you over. I because, heard that, actually. Yeah, that true. People in California are horrible drivers. Like, they don't care if they hit you or not. It's it okay. is the fucking worst drivers on the planet. And I've been to almost every state on this, in, this, in this country. And I've been to, like, nine different uh, countries. And Nick's been to, like, even more than that. And we've agreed that California drivers are fucking horrendous. The worst of them is in L.A. That's the highest concentration of horrible drivers. But even just when you cross over the line... You don't even have to realize that you cross the line. It's the second you see them driving, you go, I must be back in California. The, I don't even understand it. The, the, there's no logic to it at all. But you could go into, like, a left lane, like a fast lane, uh-huh. doing, like, 60, 70 miles an hour, and you will die because some asshole will be doing 20 up ahead, but you didn't know that they were there. And you have to make a quick decision to, like, turn your wheel into another lane and hope there's not another car there because somebody's just, like we said earlier, they're kind of just, you know floating around and they don't really care and it's just like oh i'll just sit here in this fast lane and not really drive yeah because i have a friend that happens lives a out lot there. <clears throat> excuse me a friend that lives out there and he says and the weird thing about california drivers is is even if they try to kill you they don't care like this girl almost hit him pulled no. into a parking spot walked out of the car he like has his hands up in the air he's like you almost fucking killed me she didn't even acknowledge she was there <laughs> and just kept walking like she didn't even care. Yep. Damn. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't care. They don't care at all. Like I almost always get run over. Um, in fact, Nick almost ran me over before I met him, and he said he remembered it was me because of my. <laughs> he, he remembered it was me because it was in Hollywood, and it was like near Hollywood Boulevard. And I, I, he said he saw my chest tattoo and my purple hair, and that was before we actually formally met. He goes, "Yeah, I almost ran you over in a crosswalk." It's really common out here, and um, 
Hey, fuck and you, you motherfucker! You almost ran me over! <laughs> you wanna play together? <laughs> yeah, you wanna play together. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? And there's just really, there's just, really, well, I mean, it's weird. California is like that, you know. It's like it's kismet. I say it's just, it's, it was meant to be, you know. But um, but and and you know, uh, somebody, one of my friends made a joke about that too. They were like, "Was it like worlds collide?" And I was like, "Ha ha, very funny." Because <laughs> he was Power Man at the time. So. <laughs> How does someone almost so was hit like, you? He though? was Power Man, probably coming home from like a, a tour or something. Almost ran me over in Hollywood. And we ended up writing an album together. It's pretty funny. If he hit you but, hard enough, yeah, that like, uh, Supernova might, might have gone pop. <laughs> you, you guys are that know, funny. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> How does someone always hate you, though? You have purple hair. Like, can't they see it? I don't know, because people people just don't pay attention out here, and it's just weird, and so, like, it's this thing. Once you get here, you just get, like, you get rolled into this weird bubble. I don't know how to explain it, but California has a weird, like, atmosphere, and so Nick thinks it's the water. I think it's the air, but whatever it is, there's a the thing pot. called the California wave. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the pot. But there's this thing called the California wave, and basically the California wave allows you to do whatever you want in a vehicle. You can run someone over, you can smash into their car, you can almost kill them, you can run over their dog, or anything like that. As long as you wave, you're totally pardoned. So <laughs> that's what happens here. Yeah. <laughs> they just put their hand up like, sorry, it's okay. I'm going to remember that. It. It's not even a sorry, it's more of a, here's the wave, I'm going to be okay now because I waved to you, and it happens all the time here. I'm going to remember that because I go to California yeah. in like a couple months. And, like, if I'm, like, caught, like, doing heroin yeah. or something, eating a dead person, like, I'm just going to wave behind a dumpster. Yeah, just wave, wave, and, and you, won't get, you, yeah, you won't get in any trouble for it. And that's the other thing, too, is that I'll give you a tip about driving out here that a lot of people don't know about. And anyone listening, if you guys come to L.A., you have to do this because it's awesome, but also it's just a really cool way to get around fast. When Los Angeles has like the worst traffic problem, I've never seen anything like it. It's like unprecedented, it like is bad. just horrendous traffic, and for no reason. There's never anything up ahead. It's never like an accident. It's never like there's nothing there. It's just for some reason, every few cars, things just don't move. Probably the weed. I don't know. But anyway, so people out here are deathly afraid to use their horn. They will not use their horn. It is a very rare occurrence. Huh. So, if you ever get stuck at a light where people aren't moving or there's, like, a lot of traffic and it's just kind of clogged up, hold your horn down for a really long time and everyone will scatter like roaches. <laughs> That's crazy. I wish that worked here. It would be cool. <laughs> here, they'll just stick their finger out the window and throw shit at you. Yeah. Yeah, cousins. you can't use it anywhere else. You have, to, you have to use it only in L.A. It doesn't work anywhere else. You have to only do it in L.A. And they get fucking terrified because people in L.A. are afraid of their own shadows. They can't make decisions. If they get to a, like a, a light and they can make a left or a right, they just sit there because they don't know what to do. Because how they can make a decision is a really big part of their life. And, Dude, and it's like, oh my god, like do I go left, do I go right? Dude, that is so true. That is so true. Yeah. Like I, when I went so, there, yeah, I found so they, they, people. They can't. Yeah. Yeah, it's horrible. They can't do anything. People were so stupid. Like yeah, I remember. So you hit that horn. Yeah. Like I was sitting in a hotel room and we were trying to figure out where to do eat. You understand? And someone was looking, they yep. were all looking at their phone, and they're like, there's a Denny's, like, right down the street. And I'm like, for the last five minutes, I was telling them, I can see the Denny's outside the window down the street. We just need <laughs> And they wouldn't pay, they wouldn't listen to me. It's not funny. Because their phone didn't tell them where it was. It was crazy. But, like, I thought I was. Just, I know. I thought it was going nuts, but the way you're talking about it, I completely believe you. Like, I don't like it's a true, button, and that's like a, and that, that like that decision to eat at a Denny's is like a life-altering decision for these people. Like they don't know if they're making the right choice, so they sit and they sit and they don't know how to like. Well, do I do it? Do I not do it? And meanwhile, like an East Coaster already ate and like went down, went down the street and went to the bar and got drunk and you know bought a house and like it's just. So the good news about it is if <laughs> if you come here, you can get ahead really quick in the sense of like. Everyone, while everyone else is trying to figure out how to make a left-hand turn or a right-hand turn, or should they go straight, or should they go back, or should they just go home and put their head under a pillow, you could, like, run this shit. It's, like, insane. Yeah, because so, I noticed it at walkways, too, so, because, like, I'd be standing at a walkway, okay, <clears throat> and all, yeah. all the cars would stop, and the thing would turn green, and I'd be, like, almost halfway across the street already. Like, I'm done. And I look back, and people are still yeah. standing there. Like, oh, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? So, so oh, if yeah. you want to take over L.A., what you do is you waltz into whatever job you want and go, you want to hire me. <laughs> 
Yeah, pretty much. Actually, that's actually true. I was just talking to someone about that a while ago. He's like, I'm having a hard time finding jobs because and I'm like, no, there's no hard time finding a job here. You're not doing it right. You're being you're being too nice. You must be aggressive and assertive, and they will make you a manager, even if you're applying for a, a barista job at Starbucks. You'll be the like the, the general manager in about five minutes out here. All you gotta do is go in and take over. They just let you because they they don't know what to do and. <laughs> Yeah, they're not they're not used to like that assertiveness. So they go, oh, they must know what they're talking about. And you can like pretty much become manager of anything out here. And and it's like pretty amazing. And while everyone's trying to figure out like whether or not they should put their socks on so they can get to work, you've already like you know opened up three more shops down the road. It's pretty quick. That's so funny because I thought so that the if you're an East Coaster and you want to like run things, come to the West Coast and you'll pretty much take over. Yeah, I thought we'll that be the running whole shit. time. I thought that the whole time I was out there, I was like, is it just me or does no one have common sense out See, here? See, that's what we need to do, Casey. <laughs> no. You gave us the inspiration. We need to go to California, go yeah. to a radio station, go make us your morning program. I know. Like, at this point, <laughs> like, if I, yeah. would, if I would get a job at that's Starbucks. That's what you do. You, sh- you just show up and you do it. Yeah, you know I'm... that Tom Petty? I just watched a documentary about Tom Petty. He loaded a van up with his band members, drove to Los Angeles, walked up to, like, three major freaking, like, um, you know, uh, labeled and was like, you're going to sign us. And he got signed. Like, he just walked in and made them do it. Like, you, because if you wait around for them to call you back, if you wait around for them to call you back and tell you that they want to work with you, you'll never get, you'll never get an answer. You have to just be like, all right, look, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. And they're just like, okay, because nobody can make a decision out here. It's impossible. Well, I think, uh, I think, uh, one of our viewers here said she's going to California to, to visit with her husband. Uh, pretty soon, when you guys have a new overlord named Jen, you'll know why. It was your advice that got her there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's... See that? We're going to build this thing up from the ground. Yeah, like, You're just going to find a tattooed, purple-haired chick, and you guys will run shit. Yeah, just don't hit her, because for some <laughs> yeah, reason... Just don't, just, don't run me o- just don't run me over in the uh, in the crosswalk, though, Yeah, because for some reason, bright purple hair, people can't still see you. <laughs> like, I just don't... No, understand. you can't see me. Yeah, but, like, I wouldn't even ask for a job. I, it's not like I... It... I would just walk in, start working, like not even say anything. Like I would just, I would do it. Yeah. Butt, I would do it butt naked too, that's, just to see if what? anyone would notice. That's <laughs> that's such a George Costanza thing to do because Nick and I like binge watch Seinfeld recently, and that's such a George Costanza move. Like you just walk in and just be like, "Yeah, I work here." That, that's a great show. Hey, wh- whatever works, man. So I got one last question for you. We're starting to run low on time here, so. Um, so growing up as a, a metal chick and then telling your mom and dad you wanted to, like, leave home and put, co- co-start a metal band, how'd that work out? <laughs> T- tell us how it was um, growing up as beginning. little Sagan. Um, I mean, I always liked music, so they were used to that. And I was actually into, like, punk music when I was a teenager, so they were totally, like, already, like... You know, I don't know if they were traumatized or desensitized by the fact that I was, like, into the stuff I was into. I think they were just kind of used to it. But I did go to college, and I think that they had some high hopes that I was actually going to be normal for, like, five minutes. And then I killed their hopes by just, like, deciding that I didn't want to do anything normal anymore. And I wanted to run off to Hollywood and be in a band. And in the beginning, they, I don't think, I think they thought I was crazy. I don't really know. I think they thought maybe I lost my mind. Um, I'm not really sure, but... Over time, it grew on them, and now they're really huge supporters of Hale Sagan. Um, my mom, whenever she gets a chance, she talks about it. She posts it, and uh, and she, you know, came to one of our shows on the East Coast when we played. And she, like, you know, they're just they wear the shirts, and they're like, they're That's they cool. listen to the, they they call me all the time. They're like, we have your CD on, and, you know. So like, they're they're big fans now. I think they maybe it took a little while to convince, but I think they started to see that there was we had something, you know, and um. Well, I think it's important also, that uh, when you started you know, getting, like, you started playing a lot of shows and stuff, they probably saw how important it actually was to you. So, you know, I, I find yeah. that's how parents are. Like, they're like, oh, shit, they're not fucking around. You know what I mean? Like, so they were like, she must really love it. Yeah. Well, Nick's parents say. Uh, and they, they said, like, and even, like, the music. <laughs> Wait, what's that with Nick? N- Nick said uh, his parents Nick, uh, still um, think it's a phase in, uh, after yeah, his sixth European tour. They think. They think it's a hobby, actually. I feel like, like, Nick. I don't think his parents realize that he's played like Download Festival. And he's played with like the biggest bands in the world. Nick's played with everybody. He's played with Manson. He played with Iron Maiden. He's played with. Um, didn't he play with Soundgarden? He played. He's literally played with everybody that anybody could ever hope to play with. So right now, it's like kind of fun for him, I guess, since he's already done it. He's like one of the biggest rock stars I've ever met, but kind of like sense that he didn't get 
as famous as some of the others, so not everybody knows who he is, or when they, like, meet him. Yeah, he's on TV, he's on the Comedy Central, Comedy Jam show right now. He's, like, literally on television as we speak. Um, Nick corrected, and he, like, download. <laughs> headlined, down, yeah. And this is so funny, because we'll go to these shows, right, and these some of these, and local bands are awesome, but sometimes they're dicks, and so, like, we'll get there, and they'll be Nick and he'll just sit back and laugh and just go, you know, they have no idea. And they, most of the time we won't say anything. We just kind of go on with our day and just, you know, whatever, if that's how they're going to act, it's fine. But then oftentimes they'll find out and you'll hear them whispering in the back and then they'll get back to like everybody like, Oh, who Nick is. And then suddenly everyone starts being really nice. So it's kind of funny to watch it. Um, I just sit back and just observe the whole thing. Cause it's fucking pretty entertaining. But, um, you just but yeah, he's played with some awesome bands. So like, yeah, I do my California thing. I sit back and just chill. But no, like, his is is cool. But it's funny how I don't think that they, they realize like how much he's accomplished. Just you know, in the entertainment industry, and like you know, um, so I'm very proud of him, and I know his mom and dad are proud of him too. They just, I think, a lot of parents don't um, really because they, they, they're your parents. They yeah. don't really look at you in that way. They're, you know, it's like yeah, I remember one time. Like, uh, parents went to my show and I my I embarrassed my mom. I told her right in front of everyone, "Thanks for coming out of my vagina." There was uh... a <laughs> wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you did you think that one through? I uh, know. I wanted to embarrass her. My mom's goofy. Uh, no, thanks for having me come out of your vagina. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks for having me come out of it. Whatever. Oh yeah. yeah but yeah. but can I ask Nick a uh, a question? That's funny. Uh, I didn't know that Nick played for Power Man Five Thousand. Uh, until Jay told me, I think when he found out that he was gonna you know be in the chat. Uh, did he ever play yeah. uh, in Power Man 5000 when uh, they opened for Kiss at all? Because that is the first time I ever heard of Power Man 5000 or seen him was they opened for Kiss in State College. Does he did you guys open for Kiss? Did you did Power Man? Oh, uh, he said that was a long time ago. He's been in the band for the last five years. He wrote the last album. Oh, okay. And then, um, yeah, and then after Hal Sagan started taking off, um, it, it started to become like it could be a conflict for him, so he ended up leaving Power Man recently just to do Hal Sagan full-time so he could focus his time on this. And this is his band, you know, like, you know, he, he and I, along with our um, engineer, Greg Johnson, we've worked, all worked together to put this thing together, so, like, focus on this right now. Um, but... Yeah, last five years. Okay. But I will say he's done some really cool things. He's done some awesome things. He's been, um, he's played all of the big festivals. He's played for all the big bands. And, um, like, it's just crazy to me. Um, and there's actually got some video of him, like, on stage with um, these big festivals. And I look at it, and I'm like, oh, my God, it's so weird because it's, like, there's, like, hundreds of thousands of people, and they look like little ants. Yeah from that stage, you know? And, and I'm like, that is, must be such a weird feeling. I had a hard enough time. Yeah, and I was sitting home watching Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, but whatever. I know the largest I ever did was three, I played in front of 3,000, it was our first, our actual first show was a festival with Alien Ant Farm, Cantrick, Trapped, um, Crazy Town, and we were, were on the top of the package. any of those bands still exist? That was our, what was yeah, it, was it draw, the D-Lister tour? <laughs> Jesus. No, that, no, believe it or not, those bands actually draw. Those bands still can sell out shows. It's insane. That's totally crazy. insane. I didn't so, know that. It's serious. Um, yeah. Well, it's, I actually liked Alien Ant Farm because I really liked their bass player. I thought he was yeah, really they're good. talented. And their I music, wonder, their no, music is, yeah. Sagan doesn't their, respect their music's bass really players. Good. <laughs> they have a robot. Uh, <laughs> California wave. I'm going to get like so much, I'm going to get so much fucking hate mail now. You suck, Sagan. You don't like fucking bass players. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, I like robots, but no. Um, but no, Alien Ant Farm's awesome. Like their their music's great, and like yeah, like they draw. Like the, all those bands can still like pack a room, and um, it's crazy because there's this weird revival going on right now where all the music from like the '90s and the early 2000s is huge right now, and so like any of those bands, you like, know, we've been playing because like, us old folks are getting nostalgic. Yeah, because that's I, when because new like a lot yeah. of newer music like we just mean Jay can't get into. It there's sucks. Some, there's some, but like maybe you, and that's well. Why. That's what I was gonna say. There's a, there's definitely like a paradigm shift in how the type like the music that that's being released right now. Like let's just put it this way on Facebook. Every five minutes, I'll see, like, oh, I'm dropping my new song tomorrow. I'm like, are you even a musician? Like, people are just deciding to go out and buy, like, this really cheap, like, studio equipment. 
um, which is completely affordable now. We're back in the day. It was like you had to go to like a, an expensive studio to make an album. Now you can just do it in your bedroom. Yeah. So everybody has an album. Everybody's in a band. Everybody thinks they're doing the new big thing. And then, you know, you listen to the music and you're like, oh, my God, this is horrendous. And it's just so oversaturated that there's really, you have no choice but to listen to older music because you know it's safe. And this new stuff is like, you know, a lot of it's just not even, I can't even call it music. I don't know what it is. And so, Nobody yeah, it's definitely. Sing anymore. Uh, yeah, like, I found myself listening to Limp Bizkit oh. the other day. Because, oh, like, it was the best thing I could find Don't at admit the to that. <laughs> like, but, but now <laughs> it's actually funny. Like, listening to Limp Bizkit when I'm older. Like I sort of realized yeah. it wasn't that bad. Like it was actually yeah, it was, it there was, was fun. some good part. Yeah, it was fun. It was yeah, really- well, a lot of the music was fun, or they put effort into like what they were talking about with their songs. Like every song, maybe back then, you know, you didn't understand it, but now you like a lot of times you get a little older, you understand something a little more and it has better meaning. Yeah. Do you remember Seven Dust at like, all? Oh God. <laughs> mm-hmm. I I know who they are because one of my friends toured with them, but yeah. I don't really know anything about the yeah, music. Yeah, because I started listening. But like, to them. I just I don't know. Like the, the the art of singing has is it doesn't like it almost like in rock and music. Like yeah, there's exactly. like you have like three options anymore. It's either it's like either someone's doing opera singing, which I'm not into, so I can't even get down with that dragon flying shit. Like I just can't do it. <laughs> and then there's like rap, the the really horribly like white boy rapping, which I I just, like to me. I can't get on board with the with rap like that unless it's really done well and talented and all that. And I don't know. I just then there's like just screaming, which I think there's definitely a place for like parts of the song where there should be some screaming if it's a hard song. But the whole thing, I can't handle it. I'm like, I can't do this. Oh really? I love it. Uh, I like nonstop Animal... Cookie Monster jam. Oh, I love it. I find my. Cookie I mean, Monster, I like the Cookie <laughs> Monster vocals personally, but I find myself being drawn to a lot of uh, female metal the metal singers, uh, as you can probably tell from our last yeah. bands of the week, just because they can actually do it. They actually have the pipes. Yeah. You, you included, of course. Yeah. Uh, you guys actually you. are able to do it, and uh, you know even bands like you know Hailstorm, Lizzie Hale has a hell of a fucking set of pipes on her. And what guys do you know? Yeah, are that's doing the thing that? is it's like if, if 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 somebody could actually sing and like you know yeah, there's obviously like a niche market for like screaming is a niche market for you know all these things, but I feel like I have I'm more impressed by someone who can actually sing. I mean, where you and know, I'm more impressed no, by no somebody who actually puts effort in. There's no Halfords and there's no like. Uh, no, not, D, not, you know, no, no, that's never gonna, that's, that's never gonna happen ever again. No, you're never gonna see that ever again. And and and, the, and for the handful of people that may have those abilities, they're just gonna have a hard time getting their foot in the door because I guess it's probably much easier to push out you know bullshit right now than you know anything worthwhile. And so I feel like it'll come back around at some point, but right now it's just we're kind of stuck with um, you know people who put together music you know, on their iPhone, and <laughs> I, sometimes I'm just shocked by it, and yeah, everybody that's got a, you know, an album, I mean, even, like, my mom, my mom's like, oh, the neighbor down the road's in a band, I'm like, how do you know that, like, because <laughs> everybody has a band, <laughs> they got their mixed because everybody out, has a band now, and I was, yeah, and I was telling Nick, like, when I was growing up, like, I don't, I only knew, like, a handful of people that were, like, musicians, and I knew a guy that was, like, in a band, and I knew a girl who played guitar, she's, like, introduced me to the type of guitar that I currently play and like like it was like stuff like that but it was like kind of few and far between and now all of a sudden it's like everybody I know plays an instrument everybody I know is in a band I'm not saying that they're good at what they're doing I'm just saying everyone I know is trying to do it and I don't know why because music pays less right now than it ever did before so why is it like suddenly like a popular thing to do yeah that's true whereas yeah, before, before it was like you know only a few people well nowadays so I don't know what it is it could be just software it's just yeah. yeah. You know, so that goes, too, it's it's easier. That, it, yeah, it it's just easier. Has that generic ass beat, you know that boots and chaps and boots and chaps and yeah. boots and chaps. And yeah, <laughs> just fucking rap. I love. I it. also think like, I also think people do it because they're trying to find a way to stand up. Because this whole thing now is like our world that we live in is all about being popular on the internet, and so everyone's trying to do their thing just to outshine the next person, and so like. I feel like maybe music's an easier way to do that because, you know, maybe like relying on being like a model or relying on something smart or even something funny, all of that. So they think, oh, if I just start a band, anybody can start a band, I'll, I'll get popular or something. And so maybe that's part of it. I don't know. No, you have a kind of weird. That's why I think people are like fucking tying airbags to their asses and getting launched in the air and burning themselves and just to get getting famous. shot yeah. on YouTube because yeah. they tried to stop it with a Bible. 
Yeah, it's just fucking weird. People, yeah. yeah, that's what I. Yeah, think it is. and then you and then you wonder like it's like that movie Idiocracy where they have like that TV show Al My Balls. You know, are we just going to be programmed to like watch this bullshit constantly, or it's like I don't know. I just I just wish that you know music could be taken a little more seriously um, because you know I've been a musician my whole life, so I I have like a different love for it in the sense of it was never about popularity. It was never about um, how many likes I could get. It was more about how I feel musically and right. I love, you know, as a job, you know, and everybody wants to love with, love their job, you know, and yeah. well, an artist will so create like, art no matter regardless. what the job is, you want to be happy. Yeah. One, one quick question. Yeah, exactly. So one quick question, uh, last question before, you know, we get going around a little time here, but do you remember what your first sure. CD was? Like your first, My first CD? Yeah. Like your first album. It was, it was Evil Eyes by the Misfits. Oh, Good God. girl. And I remember that. <laughs> and I remember that because I asked my mom if I could. I was hanging out with like some skaters, and like I asked my mom, "Can I?" They were like, "Oh, these are the bands you should listen to." So I'm like, "Can I get the CD?" And she's like, "I don't know. I guess." And then I got it, and I put it on, and she goes, "What the hell is this shit?" And I'm like, "I love it." <laughs> oh, awesome. the Misfits, one of my great, great loves. So, one of my first great loves. Mine was Hootie and the Blowfish. I'm a huge. I'm a huge. I mean, <laughs> it was, it was. Mine was. I don't Hootie. mean to laugh. You lame bastard. No, it was my first CD, and then there's. No, that guy's it. actually that singer. That singer is like an excellent singer. I'm just he laughing because he said the mystic. Bring the Darius like, Ruckus. The <laughs> Bring the Darius Ruckus to all you motherfuckers. He's like, a, cause I, isn't he like a country? Isn't he a country singer now yeah, or something? Did he go country thing, or something? Yeah, he's actually really decent. Yeah, fucking super, super smart. It's very smart of him to do that because country music are at that. But yeah, the Misfits, like, I'm a huge fan of, like, just not even the Misfits, but, like, Danzig. I love Danzig. I love yeah. everything about Danzig. I love his quirkiness. His quirkiness is, you know, how he's just oh my God, so dude. cool. And the Misfits and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Tell your children to stay away you from the cake. Like <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that exactly. picture today. And I just <laughs> saw that today. You saw me posting bullshit on the Twitter? Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh... Real quick here, there's we so got many a shout good, out. There's so many good tour stories of Danzig and Cats. Oh, my God, yeah. Was that? Sorry, I just heard a noise. Oh, yeah, it's like raining really bad outside my house, I think. Oh, great. great. My window's open in my car. Yeah, sorry. It's it's <laughs> like we can, it's, poor, it's raining so hard here right now. We can hear it on our walls, and Jay left his car windows down. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I need to do oh a quick God. shout out here real quick. At Cool Kid 7663 it is his birthday and his wife's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Use a condom. He wanted to call happy in and birthday. do a shout out. Yay! You got Sega to give you a happy birthday. <laughs> California way. Yay! Have a great day. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use that like all the time now. Like say I, California wave. Yeah, say I accidentally kill someone, I'm just going to do the California wave. I'm awesome. like, ain't my fault. Ain't my fault. Yeah, just do the California wave. That's beautiful. I'm so glad you yeah, told me that. It, it, I'm telling you, it's gonna really, it'll really catch on because people just seem to think it's fine. As long as you do that wave, everything's okay no matter what you do. I'm actually going to test it out because, like I said, I go there in like two months. So, like, I'm just going to do stupid shit. What am I going to do when you're not here? I'm going to have to find another co host. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's your problem, bitch. I'm you'll have to, no, you'll have to, you'll have to. No, you'll have to take it on the road live from L.A. Then you have to show everybody how it really is here. I'm That's going to, like, to nerd land. I don't think anyone on, wants to see on, the, on location. On location on the corner of Hollywood and, and Vine. Yeah, I almost yeah. just got run over, but it's okay because they waved. The, yeah, only, exactly. the only way that's happening is if you let us stay in your house because I can't afford to fucking go there. <laughs> let us sleep on your floor. <laughs> All right, well, we're, we're about out I definitely of time. have a, a little tiny spot you can sleep in. Yeah, there we go. All right, I don't guys, well, it was of... fun talking to you. That yes. was a blast. Thanks for calling in, Sagan. We appreciate it. Thanks, thanks Nick. Uh, I know you're out in the chat. <laughs> All right, you everybody. You guys got it. Thanks again to our special guest, uh, go Sagan roll, Amory. Go roll up your window. Well, I'll go roll, <laughs> go up, my roll up your window. I'm going to steal a trash bag from Casey <laughs> so I can sit on a fucking wet seat. <laughs> and find out next week when I try out a corset. <laughs> <laughs> got, got that two-day shipping, dog. <laughs> Thanks again, though. You were you were really funny and very uh, nice. Anytime, very anytime, either one of you guys want to come on the show, anytime, you're welcome to. We love having you on. Uh, you got it. So anyway, <laughs> thanks a lot. This was Openly Hostile Opinions. We'll see you all next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Later. This has been the Openly Hostile Opinions podcast. <laughs>
Be sure to like, subscribe, rate, and comment. If you want to help make all this possible, become a patron at patreon.com slash openly hostile opinions. Good morning! Morning! Good morning! Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Ha, ha, ha.